Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So in today's video, we're walking to the village that today we're not going back to the town because we are going to stay in the village after the walk. Okay, so um, today I have my wife on the trip. Did you say hello? And uh, one of my translator, he can speak uh, fluently the local language here, which is Hmong language. Yeah, so he can communicate to anyone along the way. And we definitely will discover more about the cultures and things like that. Okay, so watch until the end of the video thank you very much today it is very sunny you can see everything around and you know it's a clear sky day it's gorgeous this one's in the blue moon we don't see this often by the way if you first time here watching my youtube channel i would like to tell you a little bit about myself my name is uh, Nga and I've been guiding tourists for over 10 years in Sapa. I only do the tour in Sapa in the northwest of Vietnam. Even though I can't speak uh, the local languages here, I only can maybe have some small talks and you know have a very small talks and yeah just um, enough for me to knock off the price whenever I go to the market or something and to be nice to the local people yeah and my mother language is a Vietnamese so I can speak fluent Vietnamese <laughs> okay so English is my second language though uh, and I'm striving to get to the higher level by every time I'm talking um, and of course I I'm still learning how to talk in front of the camera and this yeah very difficult for me yeah I find it very challenging as well further down there to the valley that is our destination and the village we're gonna cross today is Ilinho, Lao Chai and Tavan so we're gonna stay overnight in a homestay in Tavan and this not a fancy homestay of course is only the local you know authentic homestay i really hope that you're gonna enjoy it my camera is very good today actually because there's enough light sometimes uh gopro doesn't work well if it doesn't have enough light but today is outstanding being on this kind of tour is roughly about uh 35 to 40 dollars uh, yeah for a tour this is uh, two days one night including one breakfast uh, one dinner and two lunches yeah and you can easy to find uh, a lot of travel agents in Sapa they do this yeah they have local guys uh, which is uh, the local people just like Black Mon, Red Zhao or the other tribes here and they speak fluent in English but uh, one of the problems you have to consider before you're going on this kind of trip is about uh, the road condition. It is extremely difficult and can be very challenging for you. So this is absolutely not for everyone. And if you are thinking about going on this kind of trip, so I have a look at this. Yeah, so in front of you, you can see a lot of, you know, uh, there are uh, the tourists that are doing a hiking to the village and they definitely gonna stay there because I can see that they have very big bags in the back and with the help from the ladies I mean the local ladies I'm sure that eventually they can do it but yeah this is absolutely not for everyone in front of us is the local lady and she's 
considering the street vendor she try to sell things for tourists but she also can be very helpful for the tourists as well because in the slippery road she willing to help yeah so I have to pay attention on this uh, work because my channel is uh, you know I do the hike um, with the honeycomb sandals so yeah this is more difficult to get the seas off I want you get the seas off already when you get the seas off already they actually uh, use the store you can take home and then you can use that to feed the water buffalo in the winter as you can see in the back of me the local tour tourist guide is trying to explain about the process of the rice in Sapa it's gorgeous isn't it so by walking along the rice field parties you also learn a lot of, of, about uh, the you know agricultures in Sapa yeah it's beautiful and the journey is still long most of the tourists that I've met along the way they are pretty young or in the middle age and they are very fit willing to experience the things over here over there that is the roof of Indochina it is fancy pan mountain and that mountain is considering the rooftop of Indochina which is Laos Cambodian Vietnam is there 3143 meters above sea level so the weather out there is always about 10 degrees colder than here at the moment it's about 20, 23, 25 degrees in the daytime and I'm still wearing a lot of jackets with me yeah, so if you are going to fancy pan you better to wear some you know thick jackets not too bad because uh, sometimes you do you walking and you can be under the shade so now I'm under the very big bamboo shade it is beautiful and very fresh this is time for you to recover <laughs> a little bit yeah so one more thing you need to bring along the trip that is mosquito repellents because you will find out that there are a lot of flies and mosquitoes and even um, you know the bee flying around you when you do this kind of walk and it's pretty annoying if you have mosquito repellents then it's gonna be good yeah so I must say speaking English is an, an essential skill so <laughs> as long as you speak English here in Sapa town and if you are local you definitely never get hungry because you always have jobs to do and people want you to take tourists along the way ahead of us which is now a stream and this is a spring water this is where the most of the local people they get water to get on a daily basis for um, washing and showering and sometimes can be cooking as well for me crossing a small stream like that is a piece of cake <laughs> because I've been guiding tourists for more than 10 years remember yeah so I'm very confident in this narrow street um, on these narrow roads the path now getting smaller and smaller okay as you can see in front of me it's getting smaller and more difficult for sure
but we love it. This used to be the buffalo trails where local people we have buffaloes and we let them walk on this kind of small street. Small trails. Along the walk, you don't only face the difficult road, I mean difficult trails, but you also face a lot of kind of weird animals. And some of them are very poisonous. The first one is Sometimes you see the snake along the way. So if I see one today, I definitely gonna show you. And the pythons, sometimes you see them, but not a big size, just very small. Walking on this kind of trails, we also have to stay away from the bush or you know something like that. There will be some kind of leeches as well, and they can slick your blood. Uh, yeah, um, I started to scare already. <laughs> this is my wife, and she's now having two bamboo walking sticks. <laughs> Hello, do you speak English? Do you speak English? Do you speak English? Yeah, he Okay, what's your name? What's your name? Hello, Bea Cha. Hello, Bea Cha. <laughs> ah, okay. So she's a little bit, uh, she's having problems with the ears, but she probably can understand what I'm saying. Okay, the view is gorgeous. Beautiful. <laughs> on the top of the hill, on the other side, you see a lot of tourists. I reckon the tourists is more than the locals here. We finally complete the most difficult path. Yeah, that was the, in the previous one. Just now, we have done the most difficult path, which was on the mountain sides, and all the way to walk down. It was very difficult, yeah, for the other people, not for me. <laughs> the difficult path is only about three kilometers maximum. It is no longer than three kilometers, but it's really challenging path. Very slippery, very rocky. Sometimes you have to walk through the bamboo ladders, and they're uh, you know just like um, uh, timber. Yeah, very small timber, and if it breaks and you'll be down in the stream. It's really fun and challenging. Sometimes walking with the street vendors, they might give you some, you know, some small souvenirs and things like that, which is, yeah, by grass or something. And at the end of the walk, they definitely are gonna show you a lot of handicrafts, which is made by themselves. <laughs> this is a free range duck. Okay, so the free range, which is completely different with the others. Uh, the free range duck or chicken is known to be the more expensive and more delicious than the, um, you know, uh, the duck or chickens which is farmed inside the house. Yeah, so. Some of the Vietnamese, they're coming or traveling to Sapa, they spend more money to buy this kind of free-range duck and free-range chickens. The road is too long. Maybe we have done one-fourth of the street. It is not much for sure. We still have a long way to go. Now our destination is to go down to this valley and then go up on the other side of the mountain. Yeah, that is the Indigo Garden. 
indigo garden is you know is a plan and the indigo is extremely important to the black Hmong people here because the indigo is specially to dye the color of the clothing yeah and that is organic 100% organic the process of that yeah we have a long process to produce the uh, the liquid to dye the color of the indigos so first you have to wait until the indigo has the flowers which is purple it's beautiful I like it and then you cut all the plants and then you chop it into small pieces and you boil it leave it in the wooden box and layer with a light cloth on the roof just to cover it and then you have the deep blue liquid by naturally fermentation yeah so depending on the weather condition sometimes you have to wait for about one week or 10 days if the weather is hot then it's only about one week but when the weather is cold like in Sapa then it's about 10 days to get the deep blue liquid and if you want to dye any kind of fabrics you just prepare your fabrics and put it inside the uh, wooden box and then wait for maybe a few hours and wait until a sunny day like this you hang out the fabrics anywhere yeah until it dries and you get the deep blue colored fabrics yeah which is really interesting after one and a half hour walking we now finally in the middle of the Ilingho village so the, it's a beautiful valley so I'm gonna show you now yeah so from Sapa town to walk down here is about one and a half hour because we choose the most difficult path Actually, you don't need to be an experienced uh, hiker to get here because there are plenty of the different way. There will be from the easy one to the medium and the very um, difficult path. Okay, so we choose the very difficult path. This village is Ilingho. It's a home to the Black Moon people and there are about 250 uh, households in this area so the population should be about 700,000 uh, 700 people to 1,000 people the village is very peaceful you can feel the Chen quality here you don't see a lot of vehicles driving down here because it's very steep up and down only suitable for motorbikes or scooters but I only can see the local people they're driving on this road don't see any tourists because tourists don't have uh, the skills on driving this one most of the local people here live by self-sufficient way but um, and they also have a lot of domesticated animals which is dogs cats and the domestic birds and things like that but the dogs here sometimes they carry rabies so have to stay away from the, the dogs which uh, they have very clearly about symptoms which is bubble on the mouth or something like that you have just you better to stay away from them the bamboo in the back of me look at that is amazing really impressive There's one of the household in this village. Very simple. The house is made from bamboos and some timbers, which is from the mountains. Yeah, the bamboos, everywhere we have bamboos here. So it's kind of easy to find. The local houses here, they tend to prepare a big amount of the wood and bamboo. This one, is to keep warm in the winter everywhere you can find the wood but I reckon it can be very dangerous because it causes fire anytime we are standing in the bamboo bush in the back of us 
is the Munghwa River. Munghwa River is the biggest river in Sapa. This flows all the way from here to Lao Cai and then connect to the Red River. That's the household of the Black Mung people living here. And they always have their garden of the indigo plants. That's really crucial. Without that, we can't call them Black Mung people anymore. This is a suspension bridge. We're gonna walk through here. Okay, now I'm walking on the suspension bridge. Nowadays, we have a new one, which is on the other side. But this one is still in use for some old-fashioned people like me. I prefer the old-fashioned because I grew up in the village with this kind of suspension bridge. This one is in a very high standard because it's made from metal. But the previous one in my village is made from rattan and bamboos. There's no word of light in front of you. You can see the local people do the washing in the middle of the river. And in the later of the day, you definitely see a lot of kids swimming around here. We now found a place to maybe have a seat and relax for a while. Yeah, we probably have some ice cream over here. Yeah. Okay, it's more like a one-stop shop over here. You can find water and everything, which is local price, I believe. The things you've seen in the bottles just now, they are the gas for motorbike. So the nearest petrol station is about 15 kilometers away from here. If any local people, they want to top up the gas in the tank, then they definitely choose the shops over there instead of traveling about 15 kilometers from here to get to Sapa to buy some to, to top up the tank of the gas but yeah I reckon is very dangerous as well so make sure no fire and things like that <laughs> now we are leaving the Ilinho village so we are heading to the next one which is Lao Chai so Lao Chai village is located on the top of the mountain on the other side from here to get there now we gotta climb all the way to get to this mountain to get to the top of this mountain and heading there takes a lot of time and we probably choose a local restaurant for our lunch that's also where tourists normally stop and have lunch we are now walking in the middle of the rice field terraces in front of us you can see the building which is white and red roof that is the school of this village so every village is here they have primary school and secondary school and going to school is compulsory for the kids over six years old they have to start their primary school when they are six We are now in the middle of nowhere and here yeah, is middle of the day and it's getting hot getting hotter like this morning than this morning uh, that is too fine along our walk we have seen a lot of trees uh, with a group just now I have a conversation with they are from French and they say they've been here to Vietnam especially Sapa about 15 years ago and they said there are plenty of the things have changed so yeah I totally agree because 15 years ago we didn't have a lot of constructions like nowadays and the roads was very bumpy but now everything is smooth and yeah things change I'm pretty sure times completely change everything you see a lot of dogs they are everywhere 
lying in the middle of the road taking a nap what else they are waiting for it's beautiful rice field terraces ahead of us yeah domesticated animals here we go the black pigs ahead of us they used to be the wild boars but after living a lot of many generations with the people local villages here so now they completely change now they are the domestic domesticated animals they look pretty happy when you are traveling to Sapa, Vietnam especially the mountainous area like in the northwest of Vietnam you have to do the homestay and the hike yeah because whenever you do the hike you feel like you achieve something and by the way you actually take in a lot of uh, agriculture's information you also you know learn to love things from local people and the tourist guide yeah it's amazing isn't it it's more beautiful in the monsoon season it's coming up in the middle of may june july next year of course <laughs> yeah they are very cute right so they are now walking around the rice field terraces in order to find some leftover food which is rice and corn from the previous season and their favorite food is the worms from here we can actually see the panorama view of Sapa town it's beautiful in the back of me but on top of that I also see a lot of new rising constructions on the other side of the, mo of the mountain uh, yeah they should be the tourist accommodation in the future underneath is a residential area of the local people there are the Black Moon people living here in this village, uh, Ealing Hall. So, yeah, we'll be very soon. We'll be in the lunch place, which is a local restaurant. We, on this tour, we didn't book anything in, in advance. We just come and then see. That's going to be the real experience. So if you are coming or traveling to Sapa, Vietnam, you definitely can do the same thing. You don't need to book anything in advance. This is my friend, still having a conversation with the local girl. <laughs> maybe, maybe they are in love. The timbers are very common here and the local people here they're gonna use that to build the house and things like that but before building the house they tend to uh, put all the timbers into the mud and keep it for maybe uh, for a few years uh, normally about two or more than two years yeah in order to uh, to avoid the, a lot of small kind of insects they come and destroy the wood yeah that's the old-fashioned way nowadays a lot of local families they tend to use their lacquer and they you know that's a chemical way but also very useful yeah the rice field in in the back of me so all of their uh, rice fields they are the masterpiece from their ancestor of the black moon people so the rice fields has been here for more than 300 years ago because the first uh, time when the black moon people they came and settled here it was in the 17th century 
Yeah, they are originally from China. Nowadays, you also can see a lot of rice field terraces in China, uh, Bali, Indonesia, and the other places. And in the northwest of Vietnam, you see among the mountainous area, there are plenty of that. Yeah, rice field terraces down there. So in order to contain the water inside the rice fields, they tend to build a small dam around with a mat, not with a concrete. Yeah, so they keep the water for at least uh, in the early of two months, the beginning of two months, uh, they tend to uh, keep the water, at least about 20 centimeters of water inside. And we uh, tend to farm the rice in the monsoon season which is middle of May, June, July yeah so the best time to visit Sapa and if you are curious about rice field terraces maybe you have seen a lot of that on the social media or somewhere so you definitely come to Sapa, Vietnam in the monsoon season of course it's raining a lot but it's not every day in the daytime you sometimes have a very sunshine and clear sky weather so over there on the other side of the mountain that is where we're gonna have lunch so the lunch is not booked before we come every itinerary in this tour it is just played by years yeah we don't want to you know book before something like that because i want to show you the reality of the tour in sapa and something like that so you can easy uh, easily see and maybe if you are having a plan to come to vietnam you can do it by yourself or if you want you can you know book a tour from the travel agent or something so yeah just leave me leave a, a message in the comment box and i definitely will answer them all it's beautiful valley so my wife is really exhausted now she's exhausted because she's always complaining about this morning so as you can see if they have free time at home they definitely spend their time uh, to do the stitching and weaving something like that to make the fabrics for the family members of course some of them they also sell it to the tourists just like the lady who is following us Hello. Okay, this is the kitchen of the restaurant. Just now my wife tried to look uh, for the uh, Google map to go to the next village. And it says that nine kilometers. And I realized that's something wrong. And it turned out that um, it doesn't show the small buffalo trails to get there. Because if we follow the buffalo trails to get to the next village, then it's only about three kilometers. But if you are taking way with a motorbike then it's about nine kilometers long of course we are not going to do that because we don't have a motorbike so we're gonna go for a hike so two more two more hours working we're gonna be to the uh, destination for tonight we are now sitting in the local restaurant there's no name for this restaurant to be honest but oh, this is one of the places that I normally oh, bring tourists here and you know we have some simple oh, lunch which is stir fry rice or stir fry noodles sometimes they prepare oh, something oh. more uh, meticulously which is um, french fry or spring rolls or, you know stir, rat, stir fry vegetables something like that yeah but one thing I need to remind you before doing the trip initially if you meet any street vendors you better to tell them very clearly that you're not going to shop or something because if you're not saying anything or you 
promise them just like you say maybe or something at the end of the trip you will regret because they are very persistent and they gotta follow you all day long until you buy something okay so better to tell them that you're not shopping or something Okay, so we're gonna have the spring rolls and the tofu. So stir fry cabbage over here, and that is pork. Stir fry pork with onion and the chicken as well. This is stir fry chicken with uh, pepper bell and things like that. Yeah, it's gonna be delicious. back of me yeah the journey is long but the view is amazing isn't it yeah rice field terraces beautiful rice field terraces in the back of me sometimes you see the kid they play with their they play the football on the rice fields yeah but now it's not in a good time that's a buffalo Buffalo is the biggest animal here, so they help the local people with a lot of uh, heavy works. One of the very sad thing about this village is beautiful, of course, but on the other hand, is um, yeah, as you can see, a lot of garbage along the road. So what a pity, and of course. This is very far away from the town. I would say this is a rural area. So if they want to uh, clean up the village, then they have to collect all the garbage in one place and then burn them down. But uh, nobody get paid for that. I forgot to tell you about the price of the lunch just now we got. So uh, we totally have three people and we had lunch um, which is with a lot of dishes which is pork and chickens and stir fry vegetables and the delicious spring rolls which is very crispy and we love it and the price you can never imagine the price is only about two dollars fifty cent per person yeah it's, it's really cheap yeah, really affordable, very nice. You can never find that price in anywhere else in Vietnam. If you are traveling here, maybe they tend to charge you a little bit more, but I'm not sure exactly how much. If you have any experience like that, just tell me. I really wanna know. <laughs> Yeah, there was a landslide over here a few days ago, I believe. Okay, so if you are wondering to traveling here to this village with a motorbike, you need to be very skillful driving in a muddy path like this. Otherwise, you can never escape this village. <laughs> we are now walking in the middle of the village where you see a lot of residential area. The houses of the local people with the pig pens. A lot of beautiful things. 
Okay, so they try to do the laundry in any way they can. And the kids are here. I realized today is Sunday. So the kids, they don't have any school today and what they are playing. Chơi gì đấy? Chơi đất. À, chơi đất à. Hôm nay không đi học hả cháu? Hôm nay nghỉ rồi. À, hôm nay được nghỉ. It's a beautiful day, right? But of course in Sapa, you don't see this often. You only, um, you know, I hardly ever see Sapa, which is beautiful, clear sky like this. That's the reason why we decided to do this. So, don't be surprised if you're traveling to Sapa and you don't see anything with a distance of five meters far. I think I'm probably in love with the view today, only today. <laughs> it's gorgeous. Yeah, it's so green and clear sky. We are not alone on this mountain. There will be a lot of, you know, there are a lot of trees. Uh, they are from French or from European countries. So they also do the hike um, down to the village. I'm not sure they are going to do the homestay or they are going back because you have plenty option when you do the trip uh, in these uh, villages you can decide uh, maybe do one day hike and then go back to your Sapa town for a comfortable night in the hotel or something or you can stay overnight in the village to experience the reality the authentic homestay yeah and on top of that in here they also have a lot of levels of the homestays uh, the first class of the homestay is a luxurious homestay it's more or less like a hotel just like a villa resort but you also can enjoy the authentic homestay which is simply a mattress on the floor and of course it's very cheap only about two dollars or three dollars a night and maybe today we're gonna discover one of that in Sapa is you know we have a lot of fancy hotels and restaurants but we also have a lot of domestic tours they are from the countryside of Hanoi or coming from the city Hanoi or uh, Saigon city so they travel to Sapa a lot especially on the weekend but um, you know when you do the walk you don't see any Vietnamese tourists because the Vietnamese they only prefer the crowded and they want to see you know the place which is fancy pancake car or Kat Kat village which is a very touristic one but hiking in the rural area is just not the cup of tea for sure they say it is very boring and you know they want to spend the time just, you know, uh, to socialize maybe so along the walk you definitely see a lot of kids yeah so the weekend they are out on the trails and they try to catch a tent. Today is Sunday so they don't have any school and they don't have any smartphones or things like that so they just while away their time by playing with the mud they make a lot of things look like the cookies or something they are very cute and they do speak Vietnamese and just now I spoke Vietnamese to the kids they do understand what I'm saying we finally can escape the ladies just now following yeah, there's some local houses it's not too bad isn't it yeah some of the local house uh, which is built by metals and things like that 
yeah so that they can stand on the edge of the cliff a little bit difficult it's gorgeous the view is amazing yeah now I'm standing on the edge you can see the panorama view of the valley Ice field terraces. Gosh, it's beautiful. The house of the Black Moon people just on the edge of the mountain, and you know, it can be very dangerous because sometimes they have landslides problem here, and some houses can be sliced down to the valley. You know, you can never know. Most of the tourists that you can see along the walk, they are the European countries. They can be from yeah, French or Holland or the Netherlands, Poland, yeah, and from anywhere. Italian, they also love to do the hike as well. Yeah. In my experience, sometimes I take the Singaporean and Malaysian on the trip as well. Uh, they found it a little bit difficult to do this one, but uh, eventually they feel that they achieved something and, you know, it turned out a very happy trip. The government is building a school in front of us, you can see, that is uh, the construction. And this one is in the middle of nowhere. Of course, there will be some local houses up there, up there. This kind of little shed here, I believe that's the uh, accommodation for the uh, school kids. Yeah, which is very simple, but very peaceful as well. In Sabah, especially, as far as I'm concerned, that every primary school and secondary school that uh, local people can easily access, it's kind of convenient. But if they want to study more in high school or university or college or yeah something higher then they have to move to their city or to the Sapa town Sapa town is about now is about 13 15 kilometers away from here after many hours walking we started from 9 a.m. in the morning and now it's about 3 p.m. So, uh, yeah, so roughly about 5 to 6 hours. And now in front of us, that is Lao Chai village. So Lao Chai, it means the old village. Lao means old and village is Chai. Yeah, so it's just underneath, but that is not our destination. But we have to cross there in order to get to Tavan. That is where we're going to stay tonight. Let's go down there first. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are now in Lao Chai village underneath. That's also the home of the Black Hmong people. Yeah. But in here on this side of the village, you see a lot of fish farm. Uh, salmon and sturgeon. Fish farm is very profitable. So the local people, they make a lot of income uh, through their salmon and sturgeon. In this village, they are, the majority of the people here, they are Catholic. So they especially have a church in the middle of the village. Here is the church. One of the Catholic Church. Sometimes you hear, hear the the singing from the choir. You do see the local people down there. They are gathering together, and the older generations they try to teach the younger generation how to do their stitchings and making fabrics and things like that. This is Lao Chai. It's a Lao Chai village. This one has nearly uh, 2,000 people living in this village. Quite big. This considering the second biggest uh, village in Sapa town. So the biggest one is Tavan. 
T-A-V-A-N. So from here we also can see on the top of the hill that is where you can see the biggest quarry of Sapa. That's where local people they mine their stones which is marbles and their soft stones and something like that yeah in order to sell to five-star hotels and restaurants in Sapa just for do up decoration yeah the house is pretty simple but every house is they have the satellite -ish on the roof of the house so this is how they can connect to the TV and things like that they sometimes can you know watch your HPO or something but most of them they uh, watch their Vietnamese national TV program it's very nice but I'm a little bit scared of the dogs sometimes they are you know unpredictable it's beautiful isn't it so this is Lao Chai it is L A O C H A I Lao Chai and Sapa Vietnam this one is about 15 kilometers away from Sapa town for sure so we have done a lot of hiking and walking today so I feel like uh, yeah maybe we need to find another solution to get to the homestay because my wife she can't walk anymore that's how the local people they spend their time they don't want to waste any time here now in order to get to the next village which is Taiwan we have to take the buggy which is a hybrid car to go to that one because from here Lao Cha is uh, the Tavan it's gonna be about three and a half or four kilometers more and yeah most of the people in the group is now really tired exhausted from the walk I'm totally fine so this is our vehicle and we're gonna take this one to the next village okay so four kilometers the driver is gonna charge us 100,000 which is only a, about four and a half dollars yeah okay this is our driver so traveling with this hybrid car is really convenient but it's a little bit bumpy so this is a very convenient way for people who don't want to walk or who don't get used to the long journey like today so we've been walking for more than 15 kilometers today yeah, roughly about six hours yeah, the hybrid really? car in Sapa nowadays is really? really? everywhere, in every corner. You see this kind of car. Because it's very convenient and you don't even have to pay for gas and things like that. So we are now in the middle of the village, just like VIP. <laughs> it's weird. So this is a, uh, the Lao Chai Primary School. As you can see a lot of flags and things like that which is very colorful we just try to catch the attention of the kids so this kind of car is really slow and that is really engaging so we are heading to the next village this is a border okay we are now in the border between two different villages so in the back that is Lao Chai and ahead of us is Tavan so Tavan over here, there will be the Zai people living. So they have a traditional job, which is to make incense sticks, things like that. On the other side of the river, there's a very spiritual temple, the Buddhism temple. Very nice. And yeah, Vietnamese are very superstitious. So they come here and buy the incense and things like that. Okay, let me show you. This is, uh, it's sense oh, this is a center of the Tavan village. 
Yeah, so I reckon this area is many more of the constructions and things like that over here. So you can see they're very different between the uh, Ilin Ho and Lao Chai villages. So they are the very authentic but uh, yeah, not very famous. You know, just like we was off the beaten track. But Tavan is something different. Just like a, a city, a small town with a lot of constructions and things like that. Okay, so um, we are now in Tavan and our mission is to find out one of the homestays where we can be able to stay overnight and have dinner at the homestay together with the family. And I'm not sure where, but we will find out. My wife says you want to do the herbal bath. Yeah, so we got to go to one of the medis medical herbal baths. It's more like a spa over here. I'm gonna experience that. So, whenever you're ready, ahead of us, this is our last our spa. This is where we're gonna have our spa. This is quite a famous. <laughs> We are now in the Lazao Spa and this is located just in the center of the Tavan village. So what we're going to do now is to experience the medicine herbal bath, which is uh, known to be a very famous medical herbal bath because it can help a lot with the blood pressure inside the body and it's also can um, help with their uh, skin so you know with over 100 uh, different kind of ingredients from the mountainous area here uh, from uh, the very uh, old tradition the Metzau people so we're going to experience that so the medicine abu bath we're going to sit inside for maybe 25 minutes people say it can be 30 minutes but we feel a little bit dizzy after taking the bath so we decided to take maybe 25 minutes maximum because you know i can't stand the dizzy things like that we still have a lot of things to do yeah Okay, so now we're gonna walk into the room. That's gonna be a private room uh, for our medical uh, medicine herbal bath. Yeah, after me, please. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah, over here is a medicine herbal bath, I and mean, you know, it's really hot. You can see. Yeah. So when you touch, yeah, it's really hot. Okay, so you have to cool down by adding more fresh water. Yeah, so I'm gonna sit inside here for maybe 25 minutes maximum because if I stay a little bit longer, I feel dizzy and things like that. Yeah, bad experience. You know, uh, my GoPro doesn't work in the, in the room or something like this because it's not enough, not, not enough light. So all the time when I uh, record with this one, then the light just up and down, up and down all the time, and it's pretty annoying. Okay, we have a very good view in the back. That is a view of the rice field terraces, and hopefully, yeah, no one can see me. Yes, so after the herbal bath, we feel like 20 years younger. Yeah, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, really good way to freshen up and things like that. Uh, but one thing I need to remind you, if you are going to take this, you better to take maybe only 20 minutes. And then you have to get a break for maybe five, 10 minutes. Otherwise you feel like dizzy. Yeah, this place is gorgeous. I'm not so... I'm not sure my camera can catch it well. Now we are heading to our homestay. So we try to, we're gonna randomly go to any, any uh, authentic house in Tavan village and choose, maybe ask them if they have available for uh, slot for tonight.
almost everywhere in Tavan village you can buy some souvenirs yeah in the back of me is a very gorgeous shop okay it's beautiful so now we are on the way to the homestay Ciao. This is um, the homestay in the Taiwan village. As you can see in the back of me, this is really the authentic homestay. It's, uh, you know, everything is very basic here. That they gotta have some cooking class, free cooking class tonight in the kitchen, and we're gonna experience that. Maybe wrapping spring rolls. And Okay, so uh, we are now enjoying the dinner and the homestay and they treat us with a very delicious hot pot. Yes, everybody, cheer up! Hey, everybody, more time back! Yay! Hey, hey, hey. Okay. Okay, so just now we had um, dinner, which is delicious uh, hot pot. And now we're looking for a place to sleep for tonight. So I reckon uh, we are now sitting on the second floor and you can see a lot of uh, matches on the floor with you know, blankets and pillows and things like that. It's quite warm, maybe uh, 15 to 12 degrees in the night time. So follow me, I'm gonna show you around. Okay, so over there, that's uh, the mattress on the floor with the blankets. This house can be enough for maybe 20, 25 people. So tonight, only three of us gonna stay in this homestay. Very simple, but of course the price is really reasonable. Yeah, from here you can see everything underneath. It's gorgeous, isn't it? Now it's about 7.30, it's getting cold. It is about 12 degrees now and maybe we're gonna go out to have some coffee or something because surrounding this village you can see a lot of interesting places and I've seen a very um, luscious coffee up there. Maybe we're gonna go there and experience that. And in this village, you also can do like a massage, full body massage or something in the night. Yeah, it's gorgeous. And yeah, after that, maybe it's time to say goodbye to you. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you so much. <coughs> Yeah, yeah, they won't let you.